So uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about how to use an uh, open source library, uh, which is called Networked X, to uh, understand how to, how to analyze a graph, and also specifically how to analyze the different travel agents, how they're connected in the graph. So yeah. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Chuck. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. You can find me there. And also, I am, I'm from London and uh, I'm also organizer of the AI Club for Gender Minority, which is like a, a meetup, which is focusing on, um, you know, the minority in the IT industry will, you know, um, be in a group, support each other and, you know, um, do some fun things together. We will have a general general club meeting very soon, which will repaper for intellectual conversation, which is amazing. But what's more amazing is uh, we will have also Python Sprint, which we contribute to open source together. So this is for everyone. Everyone can join our Sprint and we contribute to open source. So I, I'm sure that, you know, this Saturday and Sunday we'll have Sprint here uh, at the conference. So if you haven't contributed to open source, I highly recommend you join and then to see uh, you would be uh, you'll love it, you'll be addicted, and that's amazing. Because, uh, I am addicted. I'm a contributor of, uh, you know, uh, pandas, you know, scikit-learn, and keras, and all these. Like, for me, it feel like collecting stickers. <laughs> so, you haven't done it, highly recommend it, try it, and then, uh, yeah, this Saturday and Sunday. Okay, um, so, go back to the topic about the talk. So, um, why do we do social network analysis? Um, so, what is a social network? Why is it important? Um, because, well, everything is a network. Um, for example, a very uh, typical example, you know, Facebook, you, you know, add your friends there, so you connect to each other, you, then, then you, actually all, all the people you know, actually like, or everybody on Facebook actually build a network. So individual, each individual of, you know, people, like we are the, we are called the nooks, uh, because yeah, we have the notes. And then when we connect each other, if we are friends, then we build a link, we build an edge connecting to notes. And then all these things combine together and then we will form a network, a graph. So uh, besides Facebook or social media, anybody can think of an example which is similar. Also got some notes and some connections. Anybody brave enough? Yes? Power Grid, yes, we have like uh, different users and also, you know, uh, the, the uh, connection wires and all these connect to each other. Any more? Any more? No. Nope. Um, maybe train station as well, because I took a train from Frankfurt to here. So it's, uh, there's train service connecting to stations. So this, uh, you know, also build a network. So, um, yeah, so we want to analyze the big picture of what's happening because it's quite useful, right? Uh, for example, we want to analyze the power grid, like uh, how to make it more efficient, how the uh, different, you know, um, users like uh, factories or household connect to each other, how all these stations connect to each other so, you know, travelers can easily go from one, to an one station to another. So we want to analyze them. We want to understand them in data science or data in general. So... Uh, for my case, I used to work in a travel agent. So, um, so it's all about, you know, um, hotel and holidays is, is nice. Uh, I always want to go on holiday. So, um, if I'm going on a holiday and I want to book a hotel online, so basically everybody nowadays do, do it online, right? So just go to a website, go to like, um, booking.com, Trafago, TripAdvisor, you name it, whatever, or even Google. And then you put in the details of your stay, like, oh, when are you going? Check in, check out. And also, um, like, are you traveling with your partner, or traveling with family? You just put in the number of people. And then also room type, maybe with your family, you want a big end, like a big, uh, big suit for a family suit for everybody. And then city, where are you going? Or specifically, which hotel you want to stay? So you put in all these details, right? And the website is behind, you know, it's like at the back, back end. It will do it for you. It's like, it will, be crazy. It will be like firing all these API requests everywhere. Try to, try to find your perfect room for you. Because if you book through them, they would make profit, right? So they want to do it for you. They love it. And then, but sometimes the tricky thing is 
well, these agents are interconnected with each other. Maybe like, you know, uh, if booking, let's say, just as, this is, as an example, let's say booking.com get your request. And then, but booking.com can't find the hotel directly because maybe you're going to some like specific resort that you really want to go. Your friend have been and you really want to go to the same resort. It's quite specific. And then booking.com was like, okay, maybe I'll ask Travago, do they have it? <laughs> so they are maybe they're interconnected to each other. So. From all these search requests, which is, you know, a lot every day, right? Because everybody loves to travel. So there's a lot of requests. Through all those, we can actually kind of see how they're connected, how all these agents, you know, like they, co like com you know, um, communicate with each other with the API and stuff. So we got to see how it goes. So, uh, for the, for the demonstration or, or, you know, the case study today, um, yeah, uh, each note, uh, in our graph will be the travel agent. Uh, unfortunately, because, you know, that is, uh, you know, um, some, you know, commercial thing. I can't show you which agent, like with the name and stuff, it's just uh, some mock-up code. So they will be just like a number. So it's, it's not referred to anything. It's mock-up. And, um, also, um, for, for that graph, we will, uh, see like, um, if the two agents, they, they are asking for the same request at the same time. So, for example, uh, the same booking, which is defined by they are requesting the same property, same hotel, same check-in, check-out date, and same room type. And then within a short period of time, because, you know, like if today I search for going to, um, like, Cosware for, uh, you know, for the conference, maybe somebody who booked, but, like, will book to like tomorrow. We won't book at the same time, right? The, the chances is, is very, very rare. So if... If everything is the same, and if it's like uh, the request is fire, it is uh, the not not very you know apart. It's like a short period of time. They're both requesting the same thing. We suspect that actually is the source of this request is from the same person. So they are making the same request. So they may be connected to each other. So we want to uh, build an build uh, an edge, you know, build a link between them. So it's from the initial searcher, which is like who fired the, the request first, and then to the, the one who fired maybe like one second later, because what happened is like, A, this agent may be like, okay, now I need to look for the hotel for me to travel to the conference, and then and then it asks B, and then so B, uh, you know, get the request maybe like one second later, and then they both ask the, the company that I, you know, like, uh, the, that got this request. So you can see from this company's point of view, actually these two agents making the same request, but they are slightly apart from each other, but not too far, like not too far apart, not a day ago or not a year or something. It's like, so you can see that maybe A and B are connected. That's why they are asking for the same thing in a short period of time. So. Yep, uh, before I dive into it, maybe I should, uh, give some background information about a graph. Uh, this is, you know, a very beginner friendly talk. If you haven't done any graph, you know, analyzation, if you don't know what's a graph, I'm gonna tell you now. So, for a graph, usually when we model it with, you know, uh, you know, with programs, with, uh, you know, do some more computer modeling, we would try to represent it. Because we can't just draw pictures and tell a computer, this is my graph, right? So, uh, we have to represent it in a mathematical way. So, um, there's one way to do it is to have a set of nodes and a set of edges. So you have a graph, which is, uh, defined by V, which is the, the, the set of nodes, and then E, which is a set of edges. Each edge is like from one node to another. So that's, that's the, the, the basic form. But that's not a very good representation because it's not fast, it's not efficient, because there's a lot of redundant information. All, all these, you know, all these things appear in the edges, obviously, is a note and like this, this duplicate. So, um, so some, sometimes we want to like represent it with a JSONC matrix, which is like, uh, the, 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 the graph like above. You see all these matrices with zero and ones. They are the JSONC matrix. So if the two nodes are connected to each other, like for example, we have the column, we have like A, B, C, D, E, all these nodes, and then the, 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 this is the row, and the column is like A, B, C, D, E, and all these. If they're connected to each other, then the intersection will give them a one. So that's, uh, that's quite straightforward. Um, and also there's adjacency list. For example, you can see the, the picture up, uh, below. So it's like nodes one is connected to nodes two, and also Two is, and also one is connected to look four and one is connected to look three. So it's like, um, uh, adjacency list. So for each node, we find their adjacent, like the neighbors, and then we put it 
there. So it's a list. Uh, also, uh, in uh, in my case study today, I use edge list to, as a data frame to put it into network X, which is similar to an adjacency list. But I I could have you know instead of one connected to two and four and three, I just say one is connected to two, one is connected to four, one con one is connected to three. So I just list all of the edges. So yeah. As I said, I have to put in this all this uh, actually all this information into network X, right? So I aggregate all this data, make it clean. It's all the data scientists do it, like clean the data. We are like cleaners, clean the data all the time, and then um, we build the edge list there with you know initial searcher. As I said, it's the the node which is like is is outgoing, like where they are from, to to the uh, so it's, I, I name it in initial client. I don't know why, but yeah. And then the client is the you know the subsequent searcher, and the weight is like. Because uh, there's a lot of them, right? I said this is lots of requests every day. I can't, you know, look at um, like ten thousand millions of them. So I combine them together. Maybe these two, you know, you can see like uh, they have two twenty thousand uh, per, let's say per hour. There's twenty thousand. Then I just put. Oh, that's very very strongly connected. So it's like I'll, I'll give them. A, I have like more more weight. And then if they only have one within an hour, so it's not. Not that much, right? So yeah. So each node has a direction, as I said, it's like from one from the initial client to the other, which is the client. And um, yeah, so um, we can maybe from there we can see the uh, the the hub, and then like which one. If imagine like uh, if you you are the one always being you know um, point at you know, then you are put you are, you have high potential that you are reselling for all these people connected to you, right? So I, I want to find out like who get the get all these connections. So uh if you use network X to plot a graph, it will be like the top right hand side, which is like like a sea urchin. <laughs> I don't know why it looks like a sea urchin, but um it's not the best way to illustrate it. Especially when you have a lot of lots of nodes. So uh some so we kind of Need to see it as a collective way, like to see, um, you know, have some uh, like statistical, you know, um, ideas of how they connect to each other, which you node know, got more the most connection and all these things. So first, I would pick, you know, I would um, find the biggest component because not all of them are connected to each other. There may be like some smaller, you know, agents that is like they are isolated. They are not not sociable. They don't want to connect with each other. Nope. <laughs> so they are like just those single ones, or they are just like a couple of them linked to each other, and that's it. You know, those are not not very interesting because I want to find the biggest player, right? The biggest one. So I find the the biggest isolated components. So it's that sea urchin there. Okay. So um, and then we want to find which one got the highest in degree. As I said, because if Lots of people are, uh, are asking you, right? Lots of people have the have the connection pointing to you. They are all asking you for help. Then it's very likely that they, you are, you know, selling selling things like, uh, you know, helping them. So I, it's it's got to be the big player. I want to find them. So who got the highest in degree? Which means that who got all these, you know, um, uh, edges pointing to them? I want to find that. So. Um, so that's, uh, you know, there's the code there. It's like, it's not too complicated using network X. Uh, yeah. And then also, uh, is, but there is, uh, uh, problem with the in degree, um, you know, the, the, the same centrality because, well, what if everybody's asking me for help, but eventually I ask my sister for help? Then my sister will be uh, the the most important player because my sister can solve all these problems for all these people that are around me, right? So I'm not the I'm not the person who is in charge, but my sister is in charge if I ask my sister. So there's something called page rank, which uh, we'll cover later as well, that uh, could may may give a different picture of what's happening, right? So yeah. Okay, so degree centrality, as I said, uh, this is a more concrete example. You can see the. The, the nooks there that I circle it is, uh, is how many neighbors does it have? So like, that's the degree measure. If you have, for example, for this nook, you got seven neighbors that, you know, you have connection with seven people, then your degree is seven. But, uh, but if it's a director graph, if there's a direction for each connection, if like, if, you know, like Twitter, 
Twitter, you follow somebody, they may not follow you back, right? So it's, it's one direction only. It, it doesn't, it could be like both, you follow each other, but it's not necessary. So there's two measures. One is in degree, which means like how many people follow you, how many people pointing to you. So for that notes, there will be six, six arrow pointing to it. And then there's also our degree, like how many like it's pointing to. So that's, there'll be three. So page rank, page rank is actually used by Google who, who know that. Good. So actually everybody knows like how Google kind of rank like your website or something like that. And so basically what they are doing is like they have an algorithm that, um, all the nodes will be having a page rank of one at the beginning. So for each step is the iterative process. So each step is giving away that one page rank to all these nodes like evenly. So for example, for the nodes before, right? Remember it got, um, the, the, the always degree is three. So it divided this one into three. So it's like 0 0.33 for each, each one. So give them away. And then, but, but it's also receiving something because you remember the in degree was six, right? So it's receiving something from these six nodes. So it's like a game of, you know, giving out your, your money. So, uh, we're gonna find, because it's, there's one, while we are looping, we repeat, repeat, repeat. Actually, they will eventually reach an equilibrium. So who got the most money, who got the most page rank is the, is the big boss, is the most important one. So why are we doing this? Because imagine like the notes that I'm circling. It's, it doesn't get like high in degree, right? It's only got degree of, uh, in degree of one. But because the note that give is, is in degree, the, the note like next to it, you know, the note with the 23 point something, um, page rank, that was a big player, but the big player is pointing to you. So you, you also have some, you know, some weight, right? You're also very important. So this, um, makes the, uh, slightly different logic, logic with the in degree. So let's do some experiment and try it, uh, try out my network. And basically, I'm sorry that I can't really show the, show the name is boring. It's just numbers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for the, so what I did is like, because, uh, there's, uh, agents in different countries. So, and also searches in different countries. So basically I, I divided all these searches according to which country they're looking for. Like, for example, I go to Germany, then like I'll be looking at Germany as a country. So. Uh, there's, you know, I, I pick, randomly pick 10 countries, like usually the more, uh, sorry, cities. So it should be something like, for example, Frankfurt. If I'm going to Frankfurt, then that would be like a, a city. So there's lots and lots of city in the world, right? So I just pick 10 to try. Uh, usually the bigger ones, because the smaller ones, there's going to be like, you know, you can't find those sea urchins. So uh, I pick the, the kind of uh, bigger cities. And then, uh, look at the top 10, top 10 agents that, got the highest uh, degree centrality and also the highest page rank. And then we can see that actually six out of 10 are the same. So for example, you see 248053, the one uh, which is the, the the second of the degree centrality. It's, it's a big player, but it's also appearing the page rank is at the third position. So yeah, it seems like um, the two are very similar. What about if I look at the, 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 uh, 100 biggest city? It's actually eight out of 10 are the same. So it's even more showing that, you know, these two logics actually kind of match. And then, um, you know, that, that big player, 248053, uh, now is the top of both. So, uh, that kind of tell, tell me something, uh, that tell me that, um, maybe the, the, I, actually I would, uh, say it like later, but actually the two algorithm is, is very similar. So it basically tells us that, um, there's, there isn't the case which is like the previous one. There isn't the case which is like this one that, you know, one big player is relying on another one. This, so it's basically saying that the big player is the big player. It's really the big player. And, um, so, uh, also like, uh, we can also look at the distribution of the degrees, um, because, for example, like uh, for a note, we have to, we can calculate the degree, right? So we kind of count how many, how many notes have the same degree. For example, degree of three. How many notes have the same degree of three? So I count them. So there's a distribution. So this is the distribution of the degree. This is, uh, actually it's frequency because I normalize it, um, of New York City. So yeah. But this is so funny. This, this the graph is like, you know, like an L shape, L shape graph. Kev, tell me something. 
I should put it on lock lock scale. So if I put it on lock lock scale uh, for these three cities like uh, New York and Hong Kong and Parma, the Mallorca, they uh, they all kind of show like a linear behavior in the middle, right? Forget a, forget the, the the beginning and the end. They're all, all like you know a mess, but in the middle it's like a line. So what does it tell you? It tells you that it's something called a preferential attachment. So uh, preferential attachment is basically um, to sum it up, one line, rich become richer. So for example, if you're Facebook, Facebook have this, uh, you know, uh, preferential attachment because if you're a famous person, if you're like an outgoing person, you will be friend with everybody, then, well then, you, let's say I am a celebrity, you know, like everybody wants to follow me and then the, my fans friend, they want to follow me as well. So I got more pu pu publicity, you know, I appear in more, more, you know, topics, more, you know, searches and everybody follows me. But those p people are rare, right? You know, how many celebrities in the world? We have like everybody, there's like so many people in the world, but only certain amounts of celebrity. So, which means that a lot of people like us, me and you, normal people, we are like, maybe you are more popular than me, but I am normal people. So maybe I'll be like at, at around like 50 to 100, like the, the range. But uh, if, you know, if uh, some people is like very popular, they may get like 10 or 100, you know, thousands people who want to be their friends and followers. So what do we learn? Well, we learned that uh, I just repeat uh, what I said before because uh, the degree centrality and the page rank are very similar, so which means that the big player is the big player. There's no, no one that, you know, is just, um, you know, rely, you know, the big player rely on, so there's nothing like that. And also, uh, we have an, a big player there, and of course, at that time when I was working, I know who the big player is, but now I can just show you a number, which doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> also, uh, the preferential attachment model, so we kind of find out that all these big players, actually, they are the celebrities. Everybody wants to connect to this big player because they have resources. They want, everybody wants to get their information, want to rely on them to find a hotel. So, uh, but they are rare. They're only a couple in, in, in the worldwide business. So, yeah, basically that's at the end of my talk. Uh, I think I have a couple of minutes for questions, but uh, these are the reference. You can kind of, you know, find the Network X library. You can try. I have some code there. I didn't, you know, go into details, but I would upload the slides. You can find the code. You can find the Network X and download it and try it yourself. And also there's a course on Coursera. If you have subscribed for Coursera, you can try it. And also my friend offer like a, a, a free tutorial at like, at um, Pi Data London this year. So uh, I think it's a really good tutorial. You can go to his GitHub and it's free and you can see it. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> we have time for questions. Um, you showed uh, the difference kind of between page rank and uh, degree centrality, but it wasn't really that much of a difference. So yeah. why did Google uh, take the page rank and not degree centrality? Yeah, good question. Uh, actually, in my case, in my case, it's very similar, but it's not the same case for every network. So uh, basically, if you have a case like this example network, it will make a difference. Remember, this is uh, this is actually our degree. But if you imagine, like for in degree for this node that I circle, right, it's only got one. But for page rank, it got twenty one point twenty one, which is a contrast, right? It's really different. I think for, for the case for Google, I, actually, I just uh, do some research like a couple like a couple of hours before. Google is still using page rank because there's always one big website that you know everybody is you know. Not everybody's pointing at, but could be, you know, it's related to the sister site, which everybody's pointing at. So, um, yeah, it could be like this. It, so it kind of, for, for Google in that case, page rank is more useful for them because there may be one website, which is the, you know, the back end of the other website, but the other website is the, you know, the front. So it's like everybody connect to it and they connect to that website. Could be like that. So, um, for them, it's more useful. But for me, in this case, travel agents, it doesn't appear. It just proved that it doesn't appear there would be a case like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a question? <laughs> yeah. Um, hi. Uh, thank you for an interesting talk. Um, did you consider any uh, approaches for clustering this network? And uh, 
my second question would be, you assumed that you have all the links. Uh, did you try with uh, Network X to uh, complete the graph? So there is knowledge that is not given and uh, is, is that a direction that you have looked at? So that some edges uh, predict the links between two nodes and uh, to see if that makes sense in our use case here? Yeah, uh, that's very interesting because um, cause we got a lot of data. Uh, the, the company that I used to work for, they, they have worldwide uh, business and they are the they are supposed to be the middleman of everything right so um they we we got too much we you may remember i need to put the weight actually on the on the link uh, on the connections because i can't even process every single uh connection because there's just too many so i can only put the weight there and and find the one that you know got solid connection then i'll analyze them so for that, I think it's quite interesting to kind of predict if there is, there will be a connection or, or if it's like a, you know, you can also do other analysis. You can also see if they are, you know, in, in the middle of, of like the two paths. So are they very important in connecting the two groups or something like that? But, uh, for this case, because, uh, you know, it's just an example. I don't have, you know, a whole day to talk about it. So this is the, the very simple and the first very intuitive things to look at when I have a very big, you know, graph and I want to see what's happening inside and and so yeah it's just a very you know um initial initial um initial analysis. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a question please raise your hand in advance. Sorry about that. Um, so the network's queries you showed were more or less four comprehensions. Um, and you said you had a large amount of data. Does the library do any kind of query optimization? Or what would you say is the uh, amount of data you can process this way? Yeah. Uh, actually, Network X do a very good job in optimization. I would say that um, I, I didn't look into the detail how they optimize things, but you know, I've you, when I was learning the graph, I tried to implement some you know breadth of search and all these to to kind of do the same thing, maybe like calculating you know the shortest path and all these. But uh, Network X or, like do a very good job in kind of using a very optimized algorithm to do it because uh, from my experience. Um, I mean, you can, you can actually like, uh, have a look at their GitHub, uh, networks, you know, their GitHub, and, uh, you can see like how they optimize things. I'm sure they, they do a better job than me, obviously. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's quite good. Like comparing, we have like millions of, of search for each, each, you know, I don't know, it's, it's not even each day, each hour we have millions. So it's quite, um, quite a lot. And I think even with Network X, a powerful library, I think it's quite, um, there's the, the boundary there. Maybe there's other solutions. Maybe like we can use some, you know, uh, you know, GPUs or like parallel, you know, processing and all these, but, um, it's, it's just a very, you know, um, uh, kind of proof of concept that you can kind of do some analysis with Network X. So, um, yeah, I didn't dive into the details in that part. Yeah. We have time for last question. Sorry. Hi, thank you for your very interesting talk. Um, I was wondering if it was easy for you to put the data into the format you would be able to uh, input for your network network X uh, yep. input. So for network X, it's actually quite easy. I think the easiest way is what I did is have an edge list. Uh, which is actually a pandas data frame. I think for, for data scientists, like we love pandas. It's so easy. It's basically like SQL. You can have a SQL query and then, you know, have all your data in like a pandas data frame and then you can just put it there. You can put it, uh, you know, uh, and then the network X will build a graph for you. I think there's also other way to build it. You can define your own, you know, like I said, the, uh, you know, the a set of nodes and edges. You can do that as well. But uh, I think usually if you have like a CSV file or you have some, you know, uh, structured like data from structured database, the easiest way is to have it as a edge list in a data frame and then put it in networks. It's, it's do a beautiful job. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. A big round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs>